everybody. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Corn Train Your Dog. Um, really appreciate everybody checking in. We're just going to give a little bit of time here to allow everybody to tune in. And we have some very exciting stuff here today. We're going to go over a place behavior with your dog as well as how to help manage your dog's weight and see if your dog is overweight or underweight. All right, and we are gonna go ahead and start up. We're gonna start with Becky here, uh, who has Pippi, and she's gonna talk about place. Hi everybody, I'm Becky, and this is Pippi and she is a happy girl. And I'm gonna show you one of the behaviors that we teach all of our service dogs. Um, it's really handy, especially for their stays, and it's called place uh, for us. You could call it go to mat, go to bed, whatever. It's just having the dog go to their um, location where you're gonna have them do their stay, um, but it's gonna be a defined location. Um, this is a raised corunda bed. Yours doesn't have to be raised. It could be just a bath mat. It's, it's kind of helpful if they're, you have that sticky mat underneath. Um, because then it doesn't scoot around a lot. Um, but it's a pretty easy behavior to teach. You can make it um, more fun by really adding a lot of distance. But what's great about it is it makes your stay very clear because your dog's either on the mat or they're off the mat. So it makes you know if they have broken their stay or not. So um, we are going to teach Miss Pippi to go here to this mat and we can transfer that to um, doing other behaviors as well. So. Like I said, it's a pretty easy behavior to teach. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just have her walk over. When she gets onto that mat, I'm going to feed her. Pippi. Yes. I'm just going to mark. I went right with her and feed. Yeah, good. Call it off. And we're going to try that again from all different angles. Yes. Dogs are really good about um, boundaries. So uh, when they see, as long as they can tell the difference, if that mat is raised, yes, or anything, um, it's really going to uh, be an easy behavior for them to distinguish what they're being reinforced for. Yes. So this is all making it very easy. Notice she's getting the treats on the mat. If I wanted her to look down at it, I could place them on the mat as well. If she goes over, yes. She went over by herself. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. I'm just going to encourage her to go off so that we can go again. Yes. So this is just teaching place. I'm not teaching the stay part right now. So great. And Pippi, of course, has a little bit of history with this behavior. Yes! Awesome. Drop my leash. You don't, even at home, I wouldn't even have her on leash if I were training this. See if she's going to offer to get on. Yes! Awesome. So you can see that this is just a, a, something I'm going to continue to reinforce. I would continue to move farther away um, to teach her to go to the mat, and then I would name it. So once it's named, once she knows that what the behavior is is going to the mat, then I can go ahead and tell her what I want to call that behavior. I'm waiting for her to look at me here. Place. So she has the cue of the, the verbal cue of place, and also I was just motioning with my hand, and that's going to help a little bit. So this behavior of place, you can use it um, like at the vet. Let's say that you wanted to get a weight on your dog, and instead of it being a stressful situation, where the dog has to be manipulated onto the scale, now your dog knows this behavior of place, and our corunda bed, it looks a lot like a scale at the vet. So we have a scale over here, so I'm gonna come over here and get a weight on Pippi. Pippi. That's it. I'm gonna turn my scale on here. Awesome. See how much Miss Pippi weighs. Okay, place. To her, it doesn't matter if it's a scale or um, an actual placemat. And Pippi weighs exactly 48 pounds. She's a tiny little lab. We like our tiny labs here. And um, so knowing your dog's weight is super important. So now I have a baseline for Pippi. I know that she weighs 48 pounds, and I'm going to pay attention if that fluctuates. We're going to come over here now and join Susan, and she's, she's going to give us some more information on keeping your dog at a healthy weight. And how to tell. Hi everybody. We are sticklers here about our dogs being really good weight. Not only because our dogs are working dogs, we just know it's healthier. Way too many dogs out there are way too, too much. 
and it's not healthy. I know I've been struggling with weight, it's harder for me to run, my joints hurt. Um, so we wanna make sure our dogs are in as good as health as possible. So one, uh, what we look for is, um, I think it's gonna hold um, Pippi here straight. I need her standing, not sitting. And uh, we'll let you look over in a moment. Her ribs should be uh, sprung. There should be a very different, like a fit, an eight. So ribs, uh, thorax area, and then hips. She should have a figure, right? She should have a figure eight. She should definitely. And it should not be too voluptuous. No. <laughs> no, it's very actually sad. I actually am more sad about fat dogs and very thin dogs and healthy dogs. And our, not that our dogs aren't necessarily athletes, but it's just healthier for them. And they're gonna live much, much longer. So while Becky holds her straight, what I'm gonna do is take my fingers, the feeling part of my fingers, I'm gonna put them on her ribs and very slowly rub them back and forth and I should be able to feel ribs. Um, hers are a little hidden, not bad. Okay, but it should feel like when I rub my fingers over my knuckles, not over my arms. I should very easily be able to feel that. So she's gonna hold her straight again. I'm not gonna be like this, I'm not gonna be like this. I'm gonna do it very slow and feel those ribs. I'm also gonna feel for her hip bones. I should be able to feel those pretty easily. Looks like we need to take a little bit off of her, but not bad. She does have that nice figure eight um, shape there. So that, those are some of the main things that we look for is conditioning. Not just using your eyes, using your fingers. You have to feel for it. And Susan, what about um, a dog that is, uh, has a big, heavy coat? Ah, I'm glad you brought that up. I was one time coaching someone who looked like their dog was like a, 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 a it was a border collie or Australian Shepherd, big, it looked fat. I was coaching those people on what they needed to feed. Thank goodness the dog came over and so, um, lined up beside me and put my arms around her and I, oh my God. I felt her, she felt actually rather bony. You need to use your fingers. It's very, I have dogs that are very, very, um, almost have no hair. I still use my fingers. I always use my fingers to be able to tell the condition of my dog. So, extremely important. Yeah, we mainly work here at Service Dogs Inc. If you've seen, we work with a lot of labs, um, but occasionally we'll get a golden retriever in and, and we put our fingers on our labs to make sure that their weight's good, but it's even more important with say a golden, because I've definitely thought that a golden was overweight before and then went to touch them and went, oh no, they're actually, they're actually fine. But you don't want to just assume that that's, that that's fur either. So Susan was saying, and I agree, you, you were, we're starting to have to push to feel um, Pippi's ribs a little bit, which tells us that she absolutely does not need to gain any more weight. So now our job is to keep an eye on it. And we have a scale here at the center, so it's easy for us to weigh our dogs every week, which we do. We weigh our dogs every week. Um, we also have a bucket uh, system that we work with where our dogs are, um, we get all their ration for the day. After they get breakfast, the rest of it goes in a bucket. All of their training food comes out of that. Any treats that they're giving, it's all accounted for. So that way they don't just plump right up because we're working with the dogs a little bit more. So that's it's really important that you're not just throwing extra things at your dog all the time um, just because you want to do all this fun enrichment that we've been doing. It's important to keep it um, within their, their ration. So we would, here at the center with somebody like Pippi, we would put her, we would make a note, Pippi's 48 pounds, that does not need to gain any more weight. And then we'd watch and see, you know, we, we, uh, we, we try to finesse it and find that our dog's perfect weight and her perfect weight might be closer to 47 or something like that. Um, so little tweaks. Now we're not concerned, obviously, and I wouldn't classify Pippi as overweight. We'd just say she doesn't need to gain anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Right, so one thing you do not want to do is whatever your bag of food that you're feeding is look on the bag and say, oh, my, it doesn't sense my dog needs to go less. Not right. What that does not account for is your individual dog, what age it is, what activity level, and keep in so mind they're trying to sell dog food. Yes, they are, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we definitely, Ma, Pippi probably gets somewhere around two cups, maybe less because she's under 50 pounds. So a lot of our smaller labs are right around the two cup um, mm -hmm. mark. And that's a normal, um, good quality food, not like an, uh, what is it called? A, a performance food is gonna have higher calories. And so we don't put our dogs on that. Um, it's also going to fluctuate over, um, over time. time. As they mature, they may need more or less. As they get older, they might need um, a dog food that has higher fiber, less calories. So there's so many variables, so please don't go by the, the number on the bag. Mm -hmm. And we 
also, uh, we can't go by how hungry our dogs are either, can we? No. I, I think I've never met a dog that would say, I've had enough. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly I've not allowed. <laughs> yeah. They were, they, they always, we, we get that a lot. Um, when we're talking with our clients and maybe have to let them know that their dog's a little bit overweight and they're gonna have to take some weight off of their dogs and we'll hear, but they're hungry, they're hungry. Well, um, yeah, they might, dogs think they're always hungry. So, and especially around dinner time, they're gonna be showing you all those behaviors. I know my dog actually picks a bowl up if she has access to it and brings it to me, you know, and she'll do it earlier and earlier every day if, if let, and she would eat way, way more than um, she needed and still act hungry. You know, I know that she could eat right away and then I might be eating dinner and she's still right there saying, I'm hungry too. Um, so you can't go by your dog's um, cues of saying, I'm hungry. Um, but if you feel like your dog's hungry, we do have, we've got some things over here that could um, maybe help out. Sometimes when we need to um, say with Kippy, let's pretend like she uh, is getting two cups, we say, you know what, she needs to back off a little bit. We don't want them starving. We want, they aren't starving. That is still plenty of food. But we're going to add something that maybe gives them a little bit of uh, satisfaction. So we, one of the things, first things we add are green beans. We might put some pumpkin in their dog food. Um, we might, for snacks, give them pieces of apple. Um, healthy um, vegetables that are okay for dogs to eat. Uh, we can add those and it seems to satisfy them without making them hungry or gaining uh, calories. And if they're really hungry, guess what? They'll eat those green beans. <laughs> and if they don't eat the green beans, they're not that hungry. So uh, that's, a, that's a important to keep in mind there. Um, we Lots of times we'll try to get them with reduced um, salt if possible. Your dog doesn't need all that sodium, but um, the green beans work out really well. And if we were stuck in a con, maybe we don't use peanut butter, maybe we use pumpkin, right? Mm -hmm, little, little things like that. When you've got these voracious eaters as well, um, sometimes this is something you would have to go out and buy. Um, but it's just a different kind of food bowl here that's really going to have your dog slow down when they eat and maybe enjoy their meal a little bit more. Um, but Susan also rigged up something over here. So um, sometimes if your dog is eat way too fast, they can get too much air in their stomach, which is not good and actually dangerous for some dogs. So I got this from uh, some horse people once that said their, their horses were eating way too fast. So they put a big old rock in there. So it really has to work around. You can put other objects. If I didn't have a big rock, I might take some cans from my pantry and put them in there so dog, it makes them slow down and be more thoughtful about, about eating mm -hmm. and consuming their food. Oh, and look, it's our handy dandy ah, measuring cups. Not just a regular drinking cup? No! Oh. <laughs> so this is another one that we get a lot. We'll ask, how much are you feeding your dog? Uh, I'm feeding them two cups. And we've learned that we have to have people actually show us that cup. And it may be, we should have brought out a big glass, right? Um, so <laughs> from the kitchen that actually holds two measuring cups. So they think they're feeding two cups and they're feeding four cups. So when you're measuring, use a measuring cup. And a cup is gonna be a level cup, right? It's not gonna be, that's how we really know how much our, our dog is eating. Um, and if they're, again, if they're gaining weight or overweight, the only way to, to help out with that is to reduce the amount of food. So we thought we'd show you, um, we can end with Miss Pippi here and show you how we have the, the rest of her food um, is in, for the day is in this bucket. And well, we're just gonna give some of it so she can have a little bit of dinner later. But this is some of her ration. And another thing that we would make sure to teach our dogs is to wait and hold their, that nice stay and give us eye contact before they're allowed to eat their food. So we're just gonna show you how Miss Pippi can do that. And not sure how much she's done that, so I'll show you how you would do this with your dogs. So, notice Pippi knows to offer a sit. I can take a sit or a down. It doesn't matter to me which one, but if she starts to get up, the food bowl comes up, okay? Oh, so see, the food bowl just comes up. So she, if she gets up, food comes up. I'm gonna be really, well, as I start to leave, if you're doing this for the first time with your dog, you'll have to try that many times, probably. But now I'm gonna wait for her to look at me before I use my magic word to release her to eat. So we hope that you guys learned something today and can keep your dogs um, healthier of, uh, by keeping them at a healthier weight. Um, please, if you want to comment, let us know more things that you'd like us to talk about in Corin Train. And uh, remember that here at Service Dogs Inc., we train all of our dogs free of charge and provide them to Texans in need. And if you
you would like to donate to our cause, we would certainly appreciate that. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you Monday at 2 o'clock.